Hello, this is Brian with Aruba Networks. This video will explain how to assign a static IP address to an instant access point. The default behavior of an instant access point is to acquire IP address via DHCP, but they can be configured with a static address if you wish. There are three ways to do this, and I will demonstrate each method. Static assignment via web interface. If the access point was able to get an IP address via DHCP, then you can log into the web interface and then move the unit to a manual or static assignment. From the web interface, select the access point from the list, click Edit, and then the radio button to specify statically. You are required to fill out the IP address, netmask, and gateway. DNS server and domain name are optional on newer firmware but these may be required for you if you are on older firmware. But it is best practice to include at least the DNS server. Verify your settings and then click on OK. The new IP address will take effect after reboot, as noted on this pop-up. When you are ready to reboot the access point, you can do so by clicking on Maintenance, the Reboot tab, selecting the access point you wish to restart, and then Reboot Selected Access Point. You could also decide to simply restart all of the cluster as well. Static assignment via command line or CLI. If you are running firmware newer than version 3.3, you can also set the IP address for an access point via command line or the CLI interface. To do so, establish an SSH session to the specific access point you wish to modify. To verify that you are running firmware greater than 3.3, type show version. The command to assign the IP address is IP address, IP address, netmask, gateway, DNS server, then domain. All fields are required through CLI. As always, if you are unsure of which parameter comes next, you can always type the question mark followed by enter, and it will provide a hint. Also, the IP address command will automatically be set on the access point and be ready for use on reboot, so you do not need to save or commit any changes. To reboot the access point via console, you can do this simply by the reload command. Static assignment via console access. Web interface and CLI require that an access point already have a valid and reachable IP address for you to connect and then modify. However, if you do not have DHCP available on your network on the network segment in which the IAP will reside, you can use a direct console cable to assign the IP address instead. There are other videos on this channel that explain how to establish a console session for your access point, so I will not go over that here. Once you have established the console session and powered on the access point, you will watch it boot. When you see the prompt to enter to stop Auto boot, press enter. You should receive an AP boot prompt. When you do, if you type print env, you can see the current parameters assigned prior to boot. Currently on this access point, there are no values in the list for an IP address, so this means that the AP will be using DHCP. To specify the address, the command will be start with set env space IP ADDR, short for IP address, space followed by the IP address that you wish to use. Next, type set env space netmask space and then the subnet mask you wish to use. Then set env gateway IP without any spaces, and specify the default gateway. These three commands are the, all that are required for setup to, be, to use a static IP address via console. You can specify the DNS and domain name if you wish. These commands are set env DNS IP and set env domain respectively. To verify your settings, type print env once again, and you can see that the values have been added to the bottom of the original list. The order is not important here. 
but you should double check to make sure that the commands are correct as the AP boot and preboot settings do not have syntax correction or error checking whenever you enter in values. It will just automatically accept whatever parameters you apply. Also verify that the parameter values that you've entered are valid for each line. The IAP will ignore these values if they are wrong, but there is no indication of this until the access point is almost finished booting. Something as simple as a mismatched gateway or an invalid subnet mask can cause all these settings to be ignored. If all of the values that you have typed appear to be correct, then type save. To continue the boot process, simply type boot. And the AP will continue the boot process with the new values. Once again, this is Brian with Aruba Networks, and I thank you for watching.